Hi guys, Merry Christmas to you all. And those lovely guys over at Glass House recently sent me these Squig Hog Boys. So I originally used these to make some pieces for my Warhammer 40k chess set. There is a link in the description guys, so go check out Glass Hammer Gaming. They do the full range of games workshop figures, all the sort of sets there, as well as a whole variety of other sort of bits and pieces. They also do a lot of discounts if you become an elite member. So yeah, go check that out as well. And they also have tons of uh, tournaments there and lots of tables that you can go along and, well, join in. So if you're in the Telford area, definitely go and check them out, guys. So these really are some awesome looking figures. Obviously, I've only used the two so far for the, yeah, the chess set, which means I've got a couple left over, which is pretty cool. And this seemed the perfect miniature to turn into my Santa Claus. Well, riding a reindeer, kind of. And the tools I use, good old glue, a nice scalpel, and some little snips. Snip, snip, snip. So, usual thing. Uh, first thing we do is cut out all the parts. Um, try and get the snip as close to, obviously, the miniature as you can without, obviously, cutting it. And, yeah, cut all the pieces out, get them all ready, and then we can go on the next stage of cleaning up and gluing it all together. So, I have to let you know, I still have a cold. I mean, this thing's just been going on for months now. It's getting ridiculous. So, yeah, my voice is a little bit a uh, bit wheezy. I might get short of breath because it's just, well, it's just pants. Anyway, back to the video, because uh, obviously I'm waffling on here. Uh, yeah, all the bits cut out. Um, didn't really need to look at the instructions for this because on the sprue uh, has all the pieces for one um, one squig hog boy. So yeah, the glue I've got again, I only recently found this out because of the one I've got is the extra thin. You can actually put the uh, the two pieces together and then just sort of like wipe on or wipe over with the glue. And because it is so super thin, it just sort of seeps into all the gaps and the nooks and crannies and glues it together. Which uh, which is pretty awesome. Obviously, that being said, you can just apply it as you need it. So every year this time, I try and do some sort of uh, Christmassy sort of themed build. Um, nearly didn't get this video out uh, again because I've been feeling so pants recently. I was hoping to have got this out and done this morning, um, but yeah, I was still painting it. Well, this afternoon. Um, so yeah. Rotten Cold has uh, kind of delayed quite a few videos because uh, I've been working on quite a bit but that's all kind of taken a little bit of a, a break um, but yeah so you will get quite a few videos coming up very soon so yeah guys I hope you're all enjoying the festive time off uh, with family, friends and loved ones and I hope lots of you guys are going to get lots of uh, well Warhammer miniatures or paint or something related to what you need for this lovely hobby so yeah, this guy wasn't too bad, had a few little mould lines, join lines, and that's obviously where the scalpel comes in, and we just gently brush this over, and yeah, remove those, uh, remove all those mould lines and things we don't want to see. Uh, this little figure went together really, really well. The other reason why I like using the, uh, the Tamiya thin or extra thin uh, cement glue is because obviously it melts the plastic a little bit, so you really can push the bits together. And it does really sort of hide a lot of uh, a lot of the join lines. So here's the guy. Um, I'm going to do him separately, just because well, it's going to be a lot easier to paint him on his own and the squig on his own. Uh, there's a little bit of kit bashing needed. Uh, obviously, this Santa doesn't really need to have the weapon, but obviously, all the bits that I cut off, I will keep. Um, I've got a variety of bits boxes, or yeah, bits boxes. Um, so yeah, so these bits will go in that and can possibly be used. For something else. So obviously I want this guy to look like he's holding the sack. So that's why I'm just scraping away any of these sort of like excess little bits around his hand. As I'm gonna have some wire going into his hand to make it look like he's holding on to well some string really. Um so yeah, so that look pretty cool. I also want to make it look like he's wearing like a, a cape, and I want to put some um, some sort of white fluffy stuff on the edge of the cape. So that's why I'm cutting off all these little, uh, well, little sharp pokey bits as well. They're not needed. So while I am just doing this, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons for helping support the channel over, well, a couple of years, I guess I've been doing this. Um, as well as obviously my sponsors, Easy Roller Dice, for all the lovely dice they have sent me over the years. And any Cubic um, for all the lovely printers they've uh, they've been sending me, as well as all the resin. Uh, which has enabled me to, well, do a whole lot of 3D printing. 
yeah, so there you go. He's not looking too bad. So I want to have him sort of say holding on to a big sack. So I've got this sort of the cheaper sort of play doh green stuff sort of stuff. Um, I have to admit, I can't remember what this stuff's called, uh, but it is a whole lot cheaper than green stuff. But it also it's it's not as well. You can't put a lot, a lot of detail into this. Um, but obviously, doing a big sack on the back of the uh, the squig hog, uh, yeah, this stuff is perfect. Uh, I say this is a lot lot cheaper than the green stuff. So for anything detailed work, use the green stuff. For anything that's not detailed, use this. I will look it up. Say I've it, the, whatever this stuff's called has escaped me, um, but I will look it up and hopefully leave that in the description. But I'm sure some of you eagle-eyed people out there will know what this stuff is, and you've probably already written it in the description. Which would be awesome, because I say, my brain has gone dead. Um, so the problem with this cold, it really has kind of taken it out of me. Um, and yeah, brain farts galore. So I have now got a few sort of simple um, tools. Uh, these are the old like dentist tools, they're reasonably cheap. And there's quite a few of them. Uh, just because I want to do a lot more kit bashing and that sort of stuff. And these tools are, well, they're pretty awesome for sort of helping do that. Obviously, this Santa's presents are a little bit different from your normal sort of Santa presents, as his one is going to be full of, well, guns and bits and pieces. And that's what I'm doing here. So, so these are obviously leftover bits that I've uh, I've cut off in the past from other sort of kit bashing stuff. And the good thing here is obviously I only need the uh, like the end bits just to be poking out the top of, uh, well, the top of Santa's sack. Um, so yeah, poking them in. So this stuff, it takes quite a while for it to sort of harden and dry. Which is kind of good in one way because it does give you plenty of time to work with it uh but also does mean that you do have to leave it for quite some time as in I mean, it's about a good six seven hours this stuff kind of took to really sort of start hardening up before i could start doing sort of more bits and pieces to it um but yeah so it didn't take too long to make uh, make santa's sack giving it a bit of a, a rim there as the idea is i'm then going to use some wire uh to go around the top of this to make it look like obviously sort of string or rope. So now I am going to be using some of the uh, the green stuff as I want to use this on the uh, the little orc Santa dude as I want to make say the uh, bit of the cloak for him as well as doing the sort of like frilly edges and say the green stuff is much better um, for more sort of detailed work or smaller work and um, that other stuff which again the eludes my name what it is um it can be quite crumbly whereas the green stuff is say, a lot more easier to manipulate uh make finer and thinner details with um yeah so this dude had a bit of a gap between his cloak uh because obviously it's meant to be well some sort of animal skin so it did have like arms or legs or bits and pieces on it so good old bit of green stuff fill that gap and then rolling out a nice sort of thin snake little bit and i say this is going to be the old like fur collar so he'll have some of that up by his neck and we'll also put a little bit, uh, well, around the bottom of his cloak as well. So say so this stuff's a lot easier to manipulate, uh, get finer detail with. Um, so the idea here is to sort of join it into the cloak and then I'm going to get a sharp little pokey tool and sort of poke bits into it just to make it look, um, well, a bit more textured and sort of hopefully a bit sort of furry looking. Um, it'll definitely look, look more furry looking once painted. Uh, well, I hope so anyway. So yeah, doing the little trim around the bottom. As you can see, I have given him a good old kind of Santa hat as well. So yeah, the poor Orc, um, he is not looking as mean and fierce as he would do normally. Uh, but yeah, still looks cool. Because uh, obviously, as you guys know, I just absolutely love Orcs. And yeah, making them look silly. Uh, well, that kind of goes with their nature. I don't think Orcs really care what they look like. They just, uh, well, they just love their life. So yeah, the good old Santa sack here, um, you kind of need sort of bits poking out as obviously all the weapons in there, they'll have little bits sticking out here and there. And that, and whenever I make up this green stuff, I always make up too much, even though sometimes you think you're hardly making up any. Um, yeah, there is sort of loads there. Again, guys, apologies for the video. I really am not too sure what's going on, um, but I am going to be going back soon to film in just with my phone which is what I used to do, uh, as I never had any issues with that. Uh, it's only because I've been using the webcam recently, because it's a lot easier, it's all set up. Um, that's what I've been filming with. 
but it's only the last sort of couple of weeks where the video's got a bit, um, well, the footage is a bit, a bit iffy. And I say it's probably down to my uh, my computer being about ten years old. So yeah, using the wire, I've got a variety of wire. I've got a nice little soft wire here, uh, which is then easy to sort of bend, manipulate how I want. And I say because I am sort of painting these separately, I've got more wire there than I will need at the end. But obviously this way I can just cut it down. Once I've painted him, I'm then going to stick him on. So yeah, painted the dude up or got him ready to start painting, primed in black, good old slap chop method. And I forgot the old Rudolph ears, well not ears, antlers, because obviously I want him to look like a reindeer. But then I also noticed I hadn't given Santa a beard. Um, again, apologies, I've had this cold going on for ages, and yeah, I think sometimes my brain isn't quite switched on. So yeah, uh, but the good thing is I did notice before I actually started painting, which then gave me a chance and the time to give uh, Rudolph Squig Hog some antlers, and good old Santa, his nice big beard. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we got there in the end. So yeah, usual sort of thing, a painting style with this. It is good old slap chop. So we have uh, primed it all in black, done some dry um, grey brushing, or grey dry brushing even. Again, apologies, my brain has gone mad. Um, and then yeah, we go over and do some dry brushing with white. Um, so I can't even blame this on drinking the sherry as it is Christmas because I've not drunk and well I've never drunk sherry um, yeah so good old dry brush in with the white let that dry and then speed paints and as we all know I absolutely love speed paints um, obviously got the army painter ones I'm really excited because obviously they are releasing or will be releasing at some stage 90 odd uh, speed paints which will just be amazing I think at the moment I've got about, um, I don't know, 16, 18, not all too short, so I've got quite a few. Uh, but yeah, they've been working hard on, well, doing more colours, and I think they've, they've really been working on the yellow as well. That's the one colour that I've never had or good results with, is a yellow. Um, so that's definitely one they've been working on, as well as obviously loads of other shades. So yeah, 2023, I can't wait to get my hands on the Army Painter Speed Paints. Um, and yeah, be out to use and try more colours because sometimes I do feel a little bit restricted because I do only have, say, 16 or 18 colours um, and quite a few of them are very similar in look so yeah, to get sort of the brighter colours is just going to be amazing so as you can see, it really is a simple case of, well, just slapping that paint on um, yeah, all the hard work has been done with the, the dry brushing and the speed paints obviously kind of work well on their own. Uh, you could obviously just dry um, primaries in white and speed paint, and you'd still get great results. But uh, but doing the old uh, slap chop method, the priming in black, dry brush grey, dry brush white, uh, you just do get a whole lot more variations in the sort of tones of the colour. And yeah, everything looks awesome. So yeah, good old orc skin. I'm still using the Plague Bearers. Um, Citadel paint for this just because well, I, I love it uh, And until I find a new one, this will always be the color that I go for So another good thing army painter are doing metallic speed paints. Oh my god Yeah, when I saw that video a few days ago, it was like yes awesome. That's my Christmas present um, Because as you guys know, I always say this whenever I do paint this I have to paint with normal sort of um, metallic paints and then go over and do some sort of a wash, uh, which never quite has the same effect. So the fact that Army Painter are or will be doing a uh, metallic speed paint is just awesome. So yeah, the guys are all finished. So I can take Santa off of his own little stick uh, that was up his bottom, and yeah, stick him on the squig, and then I can work out just how much of the the rope um, I sort of need. I say obviously made more than I needed just so it could be cut down to the required size and yeah absolutely loving how this dude has turned up or turned out even uh really pleased with it i say apologies this video should have been out well should have been out this morning if not uh last night uh but better late than never and yeah so having a go at some snow something i've never really done had a little look up online uh for snow and the most common sort of one or the cheapest one was baking powder uh, PVA glue and some white paint 
Um, yeah, literally, I mixed them in, all equal quantities. Um, don't know if I did it right or not, but there you go. And this is how it came out. And yeah, really pleased with this dude. Um, I do love the antlers uh, on this squig hog. Um, I mean, these things look menacing anyway, but he looks extra uh, fierce with that. And yeah, I love how Santa turned out. So guys, let me know in the comments uh, how your Christmas is going. Did you get the presents you wanted? Um, and was it all good? Um, and yeah, let me know what you want to see in the future. Obviously 2023, just around the corner. And I can't wait to make more videos for you guys. Okay, guys, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.